Vietnamese chicken and bamboo noodle soup. Slippery rice vermicelli noodles. Perfectly poached chicken. Firm and aromatic bamboo shoots served in a super umami broth and accompanied with an epic ginger dipping sauce. This is Vietnamese chicken and bamboo soup. Bum mang ga. Vietnamese cuisine is often identified by a sweet, savory, and somewhat sticky dipping sauce. Nuk mam cham. Yet in my opinion, one type of meal that characterizes Vietnamese cuisine is noodle soups. Outside of the popular pho and bún mò hue, one of my favorite childhood bowls of noodles was bún mang gà, Vietnamese chicken and bamboo noodle soup. And today, I'll be showing you my simple, easy family recipe, along with an aromatic ginger dipping sauce that will definitely get you going. Let's put the ease in Vietnamese. To make this zippy Vietnamese noodle soup, what we'll do is poach a chicken, then use the poaching broth as the base for our soup, then flavour it with succulent and crisp pieces of bamboo shoots. To poach the chicken, in a large pot, place in the chicken along with half a bunch of spring onions and a bunch of coriander roots. And this is optional, but if you bought some coriander, don't waste flavour, there's tons of it in the roots. Then add one brown onion with its bottom cut off, 40 grams of ginger, slightly crushed. One teaspoon of sea salt. Anchovy salt is hard to find, but I love it. So I stock it in my shop, so make sure you check it out. I'll put the link below. If you are keen to take your Vietnamese broth to that next level, make sure you add it in. Alternatively, add an additional one and a half teaspoons of sea salt. To finish off the stock, add 30 grams of rock sugar, three tablespoons of the good old fish sauce, and most importantly, 15 grams of dried shrimp. In she goes. Vietnamese dried shrimps are small shrimps that have basically been sun-dried. Like dried anchovies though, they are quite savoury and infuse your broth with a, a subtle umami flavour. It's truly a Vietnamese pantry essential. If you are not using dried shrimps or something equivalent to add that extra bit of umami, do yourself a favour for flavour. It's like, how can I put it, with Italian cuisine, making a spag bowl without pancetta or guanciale. It simply won't hit the spot. Finally, add cold water, about three to 3.5 liters, or just enough to cover, and bring it to the boil. Once the chicken reaches the boil, simmer on low for 12 minutes, then turn off the heat. Cover and allow it to sit for 35 minutes. What happens here is the residual heat will cook the rest of the chicken through. While we wait for the chicken, let's move on to the bamboo shoots. Here's a hot tip on how to wash them really quickly. Pop a few incisions at the bottom and then simply fill the bag up with some water. Squeeze it, wring it, and get it into the bowl. Lovely. Then slice them up into thin-ish slices, like so. And then what we're gonna do is just smoothly pop them straight into a pot of boiling water on low to medium for about 20 minutes. And what this does is it'll remove some of those sour and chalky notes. The taste of bamboo, it's, it's quite pleasant, but it can sometimes be a touch too sour. So the takeaway message here is always boil your bamboo. After boiling the bamboo for 20 minutes, take it off the heat. And what you wanna do is you wanna strain it really well. I'm just gonna use a fine sieve. Bamboo smells amazing. With a cast iron pan or a fry pan, bring it up to medium heat. Then add two tablespoons of cooking oil and immediately follow with some ginger and garlic. And it's really important that we do that straight away while the oil's still a bit cold. It means it won't burn and rather it will infuse. Next, some shallots or spring onions, just the white parts. Pop it in there and just saute it until it's fragrant. Now that's fragrant, I can swear New Zealand can almost smell this. Add the strained bamboo. 
toss them around a bit. Now let's flavour it. Let's start with oh, half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of sugar, mix it well. Add about one and a half tablespoons of fish sauce. That's about right, lovely, great flavour. Get that infused. Now allow the bamboo shoots to just stir fry and just draw in all that flavour from the fish sauce, the sugar, the salt, the garlic, the ginger, for about two to three minutes. That's ready now. We're gonna go in with 600 mils of chicken stock or water if you don't have any handy. Beautiful. In our household, we always tend to have a homemade chicken stock ready. And if you're interested in my recipe, check out the link below, I'll post it there. Bring the bamboo to the boil, and once it is boiling, then simmer it for about 15 minutes. This will allow the bamboo to take in all that flavor, the fish sauce, the sugar, the ginger, the garlic, leaving you with textural and tasty strands of pure bliss. All right, back to the chicken. So the bamboo is just simmering away, living its best life, just let it be. So after 35 minutes in the residual heat, remove the chook. Place the chicken into a large bowl of cold water and let it sit there for about five to seven minutes. What this does is it just cools down the chook really quickly and stops the cooking process. This will ensure that your poached chicken will be juicy and tender. Now let that chook just sit there. Now let's build the bamboo soup. So strain out the onions, ginger, coriander, bring it to the boil and then add your bamboo shoots in. We're combining two different flavors. And then she goes, look at that, that's Flavor Town. Mm. Get in there, son. Look at that garlic, ginger, perfect. Now bring that to the boil and then let that simmer for about 15 minutes. While that's simmering away, bring a large pot of lightly salted water to the boil. Then add your thin rice vermicelli noodles. So boil on high for about seven to eight minutes. Then strain and pour into a large bowl of cold water to stop the cooking process. Now, my hot tip to not allow your noodles to stick together. No one likes a massive blob of rice noodles. That's impossible to separate. When the noodles are in the large bowl of cold water, portion out the noodles into individual serving sizes into a colander. The noodles will drain and set in these portions, taking away that horrible task or splitting up cold blobs of noodles. They'll always leave you with broken noodles and broken dreams. After five to seven minutes, remove the chicken, separate the dark meat from the breast meat. To make it easier for you to remove the breast, what you can do is remove the wishbone. Run your finger around the backbone, give it a bit of a push. There we go. That just separates the meat away from that bone there. And then just run your fingers along the breastbone. Sometimes the breastbone breaks apart during the cooking process. That's all right, it probably made his own wishes. There we go, that's one part. That's the second part. Straight down the crown, and you don't need a knife for the rest of it, because you can just peel it away, open the breast apart. So that's pretty much all the chicken gone. I'm gonna get rid of most of it to increase flavor what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna to toss that out. I'm not gonna throw it away. I'm gonna pop this into the pot. More flavor. Cut your breasts into nice slices. And with the dark meat, just tear it into bite-sized pieces. Just like that. To make the epic ginger dipping sauce, crush 85 grams of ginger and a chili, de-seeded, in a mortar and pestle. At home, if you don't have a mortar and pestle, it's not the end of the world. Simply cut everything up nice and fine. You can even grate the ginger and then put it all into a small bowl and mix it well until the sugar dissolves. It is game on. Now that we've got the ginger and the chili into a fine paste, remember, if you don't like chili, simply leave it out. But non-negotiable, make sure you use fresh ginger. Keep the other stuff, the minced jar stuff, in the jar. Follow now with one and a half teaspoons of sugar, squeeze of maybe half a lime, some hot water, about two tablespoons. That's about right, just to get that sugar to dissolve. And again, about two tablespoons of fish sauce. One and a half to two tablespoons, anywhere around there. Beautiful, there we are. Mix it well, beautiful. So fragrant. This cute little ladle, scoop her up, pour it onto a dipping plate. 
I think it's time to plate up a bowl. It's time to prepare a bowl and put one away. In a large bowl, place a bundle of noodles, shredded chicken, a couple of pieces, a few pieces of chicken breast as well if you wish, a small handful of green sprouts, then pour over enough bamboo broth just to cover. A hot tip here though, is to make sure the broth is boiling, like an erupting volcano. My mum would constantly tell me, now she would nag, that if a bowl of noodle soup is not served hot, don't bother serving it at all. Garnish with some coriander, spring onions, some sliced red chilies, and some dried shallots. If you can't get your hands on dried shallots, just go with that. Crack a white pepper and finish with a gentle squeeze of lime. And at this point, if you think you need a bit more saltiness or savouriness in your broth, add some sunfish sauce. And if you have some leftover broth, pop it in the freezer. It's be good for a rainy day. It's time for the main event. It's time to tuck in. Mix it really well. Dip the chicken in the epic ginger dipping sauce. Mm. 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 The crunch. Decent slurp of noodles. Mm. And of course, chase with some broth. Wow-wee. Wow-wee. The flavours in this bowl of noodles is just incredible. The texture of the bamboo is crunchy, tender, and the chicken ducked in this fragrant ginger dipping sauce is just sublime. I have no doubt a bowl of warm bumanga, Vietnamese chicken and bamboo noodle soup, would satisfy any family, any household. So if you want to explore Vietnamese noodle soups, outside the common pho and bum bo hue, give this recipe a hurly whirly. And if you struggle to find Vietnamese pantry essentials, purchase my cooking kit for this recipe at duncanloo.com.au forward slash shop. I'll paste the link below in the description as well. That's it for today, folks. Give this recipe a whirl. Trust me, you'll be doing yourself a favor for flavor.